As the world's only repository of published scholarly blog content, the ACI Scholarly Blog Index offers college and university students an intuitive platform for finding scholarly blogs in every academic discipline. In this video, we'll look at an example of how a student in life sciences might use ACI to find scholarly posts for use in an academic course assignment. In this case study, Peter is a graduate student in biology. He needs scholarly resources for two projects. First, a general research paper on stem cells for a biology course. And second, his lab group needs ideas for a project on stem cell transplants. To accomplish these, Peter will use ACI to browse through scholarly posts on stem cells and on stem cell transplants. He'll begin this journey on the ACI homepage at scholar.aci.info or through his university's custom ACI portal. There are many ways he can search ACI right from the home page. He can search by keyword, exact phrase, author name, blog title, or even browse by institutional affiliation or Library of Congress classification. In this case, Peter will run an exact phrase search for stem cell. An exact phrase search is simply enclosing the search query in quotation marks to ensure that all resulting posts contain that exact phrase. Notice that, as Peter begins to type, search suggestions appear below the search field, and he can click on any of these to browse by that selection. With a search phrase in quotation marks, Peter executes his exact phrase search by pressing Enter or the search icon. On the Search Results page, ACI offers numerous facet filtering options on the left-hand side, and he can use any of these and in any combination to narrow his results. For example, he can limit by author's degree subject, country, author holds position at, publication date, and more. The Library of Congress classification facet is also very useful, as most colleges and universities use that classification system to organize and arrange their resources. Just click on any facet to apply, or click again to remove and return to the previous results. For these results, Peter decides to apply the Biology Library of Congress classification, or QH, to further narrow his results. Because each blog index in ACI only has up to three LC class affiliations, that LC class ensures that biology is a primary subject covered by a given blog, rather than, say, a finance blog with a random post on stem cells. To apply the Biology LC class facet, he just clicks right on QH Biology on the left. Once any facet is applied, you'll notice that the facet changes color. The new color indicates that the filter has been applied to our search results. If Peter wanted to remove that filter for any reason, he can simply click on the newly colored facet button on the left or at the top of the page to remove that filter and return to the previous results. He can also click on Clear Filters at the top. Remember that we can also apply additional facets. For example, Peter could click on the TP class or Chemical Technology, since that's another LC class that fits his query. Peter decides to apply the PhD facet by clicking on the PhD option under the Author's Degree facet on the left. The post results are on the right and clicking on any of these post titles will take Peter to that article's page. Every blog post page will allow him to view blog metadata, citation, export, and sharing options, and even some recommended journal articles from scholarly publishers like Cambridge University Press. Clicking on the original tab will display the post as it appears on the actual blog itself. All links on this page are live, allowing him to explore any blog in more detail. In addition, he can access the author profile on the right in order to view more information about that particular blog author and any additional avenues for following that author's other scholarly work. Back on the search results page, Peter decides to create a list of possible resources for his stem cell paper. To choose specific posts, he can simply check the boxes to the left of the desired posts. Because Peter wants the option of referring back to the full list, he selects all results using ACI's selection tool at the top, and then clicks on Add to List. Add to List will let him add those posts to an existing list by checking the desired boxes. 
or to create a new one by clicking on Create a New List. Peter clicks on Create a New List. Now he'll enter the list name, a concise list description, and list tags. The title and description should remind researchers of that list's contents or intended use. The tags should be words or phrases that he wants to associate with that list. In this case, Peter creates tags with the primary discipline, topics or keywords of interest, the professor's name, and the course ID. Remember that he can also use other terms as tags, such as his course section or university, to help define his list. Lists can be private or public. Public lists are searchable by ACI users on the list page, while private lists are not searchable on that page. While he might make the list public later on, for now he sets his list to private. Now he'll click on the orange Create List button to finalize the creation of his new list. He'll then see it displayed on the original list box. Now he can just click on Add to List to add the posts he selected earlier to his newly created list. Now Peter will expand his search to include the keyword transplant. He'll do this by simply typing the word transplant right after the existing search string in the search box at the top of the page. With the exact phrase of stem cell and the additional keyword transplant in the search field, he presses enter to run a new search. The new results have several possible posts that might interest Peter's lab group, so he decides to create a shareable list. After selecting all results using ACI's selection tool, Peter clicks on Add to List, and then on Create a New List. Just like before, Peter will enter the information tailored to his new list. This time, he makes the list public as he intends to share it with the group, and clicks on Create List. But before checking the Add to List button, he'll also check his stem cell paper list box, since the pose for his lab might also prove useful for his paper. With both boxes now checked, he clicks on Add to List. Students can visit their list page from anywhere in ACI to manage their lists and access other options just by clicking on the menu icon next to your name in the upper right corner, and then on Lists. On Peter's list page, in addition to options for searching public lists, creating new lists, or viewing list posts via the ACI stream, he'll also see his lists in the My List section on the lower left. In that section, Peter clicks on the list for his lab group. There are many available sharing and content organization and access options, such as an email option that would allow him to share the permalink. Clicking the red plus sign would display more options like Twitter, WordPress, Evernote, and others. He could also access a PDF handout for the list by clicking on the Print Handout button. This would allow him to email or print a PDF handout with list instructions for the other students in his lab group. There are countless ways to get an equally relevant list of scholarly posts in this or any other topic so be sure to try it for your own courses. Visit scholar.aci.info or your university's custom ACI portal and explore the many tools and features available for researchers in the ACI Scarly blog index.